So I mentioned open-ended problems before, and I want to give you an example of maybe a more pure open-ended problem than what I showed before. I showed the greatest common divisor function. Uh, it's not really an open-ended problem. Like you can, you can solve it with a for loop. But I want to show you something uh, maybe a little more fun. So let's import random. Uh, random choice, and I'm just going to demonstrate random choice. You'll see this later, um, but I just want to demonstrate it now. So print choice of uh, something in this list. So if I print, uh, so duck false, oops, false, or 37, I run this, we're going to see 37, run it again, duck, uh, run it again, 37, and so on. It's just going to choose randomly from these. So uh, using random choice, I'm going to get a sample. And I'm going to sample, I don't know, I'm going to sample from binary. And uh, I'm going to write this function pretty quickly. So um, get binary, and I'm going to do I don't know why I'm going to do 5-bit binary. Let's say um, get binary, and let's say return. Um, let's see, choice of um, choice between 0 and 1 for uh, I in range 5. Uh, this is a comprehension. <laughs> I know I haven't taught that yet, but just trust me that this is going to, you know what, I'm sorry. Let me just do this. For I in range 5, I don't know why I'm introducing comprehensions before I've introduced comprehensions. So for I in range 5, we're going to append to something, uh, to some output, we're going to append uh, the choice between 0 and 1. And we'll need some kind of output. That'll be a list. And we can just return our output. Easy. So now let's print get binary and make sure it's doing what we think it's doing. And 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, or four ones and a 0. Uh, three zeros, a one, and a zero. So we're looking at five-bit binary. Now, now maybe we want to get a sum, uh, a binary sum, and uh, to do that, I'm just going to change this function a little bit, and I'm going to return the sum of the output. So we're going to see a scalar here instead of a list. We're going to see an integer. Um, oh, get binary is not defined. Of course it's not, because now it is get binary sum. And let's see what that gives us. Three. OK. Three, two, three, one, two, two. OK. So we can assume that this is working. Um, and you might want to think about what the most likely number you're going to get would be. Um, I'm not going to mention what that is right now because, hey, I'm not going to think about it. Um, so let's, let's get a number of samples, okay? And this is kind of, um, well, it'll, it'll be pretty straightforward. So let's say while... Um, let's make a SAMPS list, okay? And let's do something while, um, oh, let's also get a single sample, and let's set that to negative one, just to start. And while sample, uh, uh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, well, we, we need it to exist beforehand. Um, 
and maybe I'll just set this to none actually. While sample does not equal zero. Right? So to get a sample of zero, we need all zeros. And we don't know how many times this is going to take. Um, so why don't we make another variable called counts, zero, and we can kind of look at how many times it will take to get all zeros in a list, essentially, or a sum of zero. And let's print, uh, no, what we're going to do is we're going to call get binary sum, and we're going to load that into, um, into SAMPS. We're going to just append the result of get binary sum. And maybe what we can do is change this while condition to while zero not in get binary sum. Sorry, while zero not in SAMPS. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a cool exit condition. It means this is going to run until uh, there's a zero in here. So we don't actually need this sample anymore. And we also want to uh, increment our counts. So plus gets one. And why don't we print the samps and print the counts and see what we get. 37 times. It took 37 times for this to sum to zero. Now let's do it again. Let's see. 65, right? It's kind of cool. Um, 27, 63, and maybe what I'll do here is uh, comment out the samps, and we can just see how many times it'll take. 7, 73, 1, huh? Cool. 7, 81, 81, 77, 9, 3. So you can see here that this is a more pure open-ended problem. We don't know when this random call is going to yield uh, a 5-bit binary that has 0 in it. And if we increase this number, let's say, let me not be too overzealous, let's increase it to, to 20. And what I think we're going to find over here is it's going to take a lot longer to arrive at uh, a sum of 0. And I'm just going to let that hang there. Um, <laughs> it's a fairly unlikely thing. And uh, in this case, you know, we may not arrive at a reasonable number in time. So this while loop is just going to churn and churn and churn. I'll give it three seconds. And if it doesn't get there in three, two, one, I'll just kill it. So yeah, this is an open-ended problem. Um, maybe I'll try it with a lower number. Let's try it with uh, let's try it with 8, just to see if we get there. 365. Okay, fair. 22. 188. 63. Okay, I think I've shown enough here. Um, this is an open-ended problem, because we don't know how many times it's going to take for us to get a sum of 0 across a binary number.